Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shivkumar and in today's video I want to demonstrate a little bit more about how I'm going to implement the RTOS, free RTOS um, onto my custom development board. Now the reason why this is an important uh, operating system that you want to implement in your microcontroller is because it allows you to work on different tasks at the same time. So what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to implement the radio, motor controller, flight control systems as of yet, but I'm going to demonstrate it through an LED to show that there are different tasks that can run at the same time, implying that, you know, one LED might be, you know, connected to say the motor and the other LED might be, you know, connected to the radio just to give you some form of an idea. So the first step right now is for me to show you what exactly I am trying to do. So right here, if you see my screen, I have my microcontroller and I have the uh, microcontroller that is going to uh, program the microcontroller. So this is a programmer and I have an LED that I just custom built LED that allows me to basically, you know, debug certain ports and pins uh, in a better way. So I just thought, you know, building a small little custom board. Uh, I've done this, I think, 10 years ago, and it's been such a handy tool um, to create your own LED. Um, signal so that you can you know test the ports you can test the pins and see you know whether it's working the way you want and anything visual is always a good thing i've connected my logic analyzer so we can also see through using different de debug methods to order to check the pins um, this is generally a good way to even though you already know that an led is flashing up and down you might want to check the timing of you know how quickly it's uh, moving up and down oh sorry is moving on and off uh, sometimes it moves too fast for our eyes to catch it uh, so if you can put a logic analyzer, you can actually see the pulse going up and down, though the illusion is that, you know, it's always on. So things like that, to have a logic analyzer is always good with having, you know, visual representation of, you know, what's really happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to have all these three tasks, which is going to be basically be an LED uh, to connect with uh, one of these. So one, two over here, and the third one will be on the board itself. So let's get started. Okay. So what I have over here... Um, so what I have over here is uh, my code. I am using Linux and VI as my primary editor. Not to mention that you could use the MCU Expresso IDE. I am using an NXP microcontroller. This could be any microcontroller for that matter of fact, and you could use their own IDE. And many of you might be using an Arduino based system or Arduino based you know, user interface. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I personally want to be in an ability or have the ability to know that if tomorrow if there is a chip that is not available and is another microprocessor available, I want to have the ability to basically swap my targets as quickly as possible. That's really my goal. And the setup that I'm trying to build over here is I don't want to be target specific design. I don't want to design my, my application based on the target. I want to design my application agnostic of the target. So if tomorrow a new processor comes in the market, I want to have the ability to say, okay, this is my code. I'm just going to, you know, replace my target, use the same code, make some few hardware level changes or board support changes. Um, and it would work. This is very important. One of my videos, I already spoke about, you know, how I basically have configured my system for this. So in a nutshell, basically, if I uh, have to show you what I've built over here. So uh, this is my folder structure. So. So I have my folder structure based on where uh, my, um, this will be the include file and here will be the um, source file. Uh, this basically uh, allows me to um, have all my code within this one directory. And under the source, I have my control systems, flight control. I will probably change it based on my application as I'm building. It's not written in stone. It's all about you know me trying to be nimble and change my repository and refactor my code accordingly. But the goal is to have the things that are most important to the application, which is building a drone, like control systems, flight control, uh, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, which is the application. That's what should be central. And the target itself, where the microcontroller itself, um, can be secondary. This is important. If it's not, then I'm always designing based on my target. And that's not good. good. As I mentioned as, I, as one of, in one of my videos, if you want to go back and see, uh, the main reason is because my application could have multiple targets. I could use, you know, 
an NXP for you doing all the motor controller. I could use, you know, a Texas instrument for doing all the uh, machine learning or an NVIDIA processor. I could use something just purely for radio control or, um, you know, handling certain sensors or doing much more higher computational stuff or DSP for signal processing. I don't know, right? But I want to have the, the freedom to change that as I move, uh, as I progress with my project. This is what the setup is doing. That's the reason why I have set up my folder structure this way. And I don't want to be directly dependent on certain IDs. Those are great for prototyping. Don't get me wrong. Those are even great for production development. But in the long run, um, I think uh, the setup that I've worked, that I've want to work with is this is very important, at least from my design perspective. Okay. This may not resonate with a lot of beginners. Um, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, I think uh, as you see me progress through the project, you start to get the sense of, you know, why this structure um, might help you. It's not written in stone. You know, there are always pros and cons. Might be something that if you're creating, a, if you have a great project in mind, that this might actually help you. Okay. So in here, I have my target. And in here, under target, if I go to target and I put in NXP, I have, you know, my LPC1769. And in here, I have all my board support um, packages. Actually, these are all SDKs, so for development kits uh, that allows me to interface and test this hardware um, using, you know, testing the I square C or USB or uh, watch or timer or pulse with modulator. So that's what really all of these libraries are, which is provided by the manufacturer. I haven't written this. All right. So that's really it. I am using this particular uh, peripheral, which I'm using right now, I'm going to use the free RTOS Blinky uh, library um, uh, software that they've already provided, uh, and I'm use I'm not utilizing the 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 micro you know the ID that they have given. I'm building everything from my from the grounds up. So this is important to realize. Okay, so let me take you to my code right now to show you what exactly have I've done. So if we go back to um, this particular flowchart. You can see that I have three tasks, one for radio, one for motor control, one for flight control system. So let's sort of simulate that, you know, saying that, you know, one part of one LED is just focused on radio, one was LED is focused on motor control, and one LED is focused on flight control. Okay, so um, I am going to basically make this bigger. So let's get a sense of what I've written over here. Now this, mind you, the template is already provided by the manufacturer. So I'm just going to change it based on um, what I'm trying to implement right now. So that by the default setting was that this particular code was trying to, um, if you really think about it, so it had it had LED one and LED two and a UART. So I'm basically commented a UART, and I'm basically creating LED one, LED two, and LED. Uh, this should be LED three toggle. Okay. Uh, and yeah, we are basically creating the function. So this is now this is using a old free RTO system, okay, um, or a old code. Um, I think in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, but it's pretty, it's, it's not, it's not the latest uh, art free RTOs code. I am, I've tried to compile it. There are a few errors that I'm trying to sort out. Uh, so I'm still using the, the older version, but the newer version is something that I want to upgrade so that, you know, I can use the newer version of free RTOs on this particular platform on this target. But let's explain what we have over here. So these are the three tasks. And what a free RTOs or what does a real time operating system does? What does an operating system really do? Um, to get a sense of what an operating system does, it gives you the illusion that things are working in parallel. This is important. It's context switching. So you could have multiple tasks running and it's not running sequentially. It's now able to create the illusion that, you know, while you're running all of them simultaneously. That's what it's really trying to do. This is important, especially when you don't want to have, when you want to have certain things running in parallel. For example, I would, as I mentioned over here, uh, in this particular um, diagram, I want to control the motor all the time. I also want to basically read the um, the sensor readings all the time. And I also want to make decisions and, you know, do my control systems so that I know how to control the motor. And I also want to get the radio signal. Now, if it's working sequentially, this is what would happen. I would be replying for the radio, then I have to wait after the radio, then I have to do the motor control, then wait for that and then do the flight control system and keep looping across this. Um, this looping across is not the best way to go about doing things. Uh, as I mentioned, like, like you could stall the process or something that is more urgent or uh, that needs to be done and get ta taken care of first might have to wait till the other, other function is, is completed. 
we want to avoid this so by having everything in parallel this could very well be you know motor control i would actually you know just rename this you know to say motor control which is the highest priority this could very well be um radio control and this could very well be you know sensors and control systems and control systems and we're trying to run these functions in parallel that's what an rtos is trying to do so how it's doing it is uh, beyond the scope um, of this particular video uh, but i will explain i will do a, a video on explaining you know how what's happening into the internals it's a very lightweight art or operating system that's the reason why it's used for embedded systems and it's why it's called real time because it's deterministic this is very important real time operating system does not make it faster it's about being deterministic which basically says that i want this to be executed within this particular time frame so if it says you know every task that is going to happen is going to happen within say 10 seconds it will happen within that 10 seconds at least that is the that is the intent of the operating system it needs to be deterministic it needs to happen at that very specific instance so especially in a car when you you know press the brakes and and if there's a car accident and you want your airbag to, you know to be released instantly it will be it's real time it basically means that within 30 milliseconds it will be deployed it will be deployed that's what it's trying to say you know it's being like this task will be deployed nothing will happen whereas in your current operating system that is not the case uh, you know my cam my 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 current windows operating system or even linux does not have that capability you know if it's a uh, it can, it might be fast but it's not deterministic it doesn't have to happen within 10 seconds or 10 milliseconds or 10 nanoseconds or whatever be it there's no rule provision for that at least they, there is some form of real time in there but it's not it's not an emergency situation so but in this particular case if it's if i need my motors if i need my sensor reading within so and so and i need to control my motors within a certain time frame that's why this is important because it will prioritize that task against every other task if i tell it to do so okay so enough of what i've explained over there um let's go and see how i'm basically controlling the motor so now the thing is i am going to initialize the board um the board so this was default code which is basically saying you know hey a lot of these microcontroller pins have multiplexing, which means that they could act as I squared C, they could act like a UR, they would act like ADC. Uh, here we're basically saying multiplex these pins to perform as a general purpose input output pin. Custom board LED and INIT is exactly what I've said over here. I'm telling, uh, you know, this board is now going to be a GPIO pin. Let's enable it to be a GPIO pin. And here we're basically toggling the pin. Okay, so what I'm going to do over here is, uh, so that's the high level initialization and in task one we're basically going to toggle if it's on turn it off after every you know three hertz or so or uh, three hertz uh, so you know it's just going to blink on and off and here this is going to blink a little faster you know between you know say six hertz or seven hertz or whatever be it i think the math is wrong uh, but you can think of it you know um can think of it you know the speed at which you know it is blinking up and down and we'll basically calculate it through a uh, logic analyzer i mentioned why that is important all right, and this is and this is uh, the third one, which is also doing the same thing. Okay, so so we've got three tasks. Now these three tasks, as I mentioned, is very synonymous for me having motor control over here. So this task is very synonymous for me saying, okay, this is all going to be motor control, controlling all the four motors using you know motor control. This could be very synonymous with radio control. And this is the same for control systems and sensor. Sensor. The code over here is uh, setting the LED on and setting the LED off, and then we're delaying it and then looping over it. It's very important for this to be in a while loop because the thread is always going to be in a in a while loop. Uh, you don't want the uh, the so think of a task will always be running forever, and here what we're saying is since it's running forever. the uh 
we got to switch. So because if it, everything is running forever, then how does, you know, this go from this goes from here? And that's what the operating system is doing. It's saying that these things are running forever, but we're going to switch between task one, we're going to switch between task two, and we're going to switch between task three based on, you know, uh, how long each one takes to perform. And, you know, and we can control that, but for now, we're not controlling it. Uh, let the operating system figure out what's the best way to time slice this whole thing and context switch the whole thing based on what it feels best. And because the application right now is very simple, blinking in LED, it's more... The, the operating system is is not necessary for this particular task, uh, but this is just to show a proof of concept. All right, so now I'm going to build the code. So I'm going to go to script and it's going to build. Um, I did speak a little bit about how this is built. So if I go to say script, um, I am basically doing a you know doing the uh, building phase, uh, and then I'm moving it moving all the object files into a particular folder, and then I am linking all the files. All right, so I'm still using the old RTOS version, so you can really stay as certain syntaxes that are not uh, based on you know say the 2022 version of RTOS. Um, so as I mentioned, I will have to you know upgrade it eventually. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is this is where it gets tricky because currently my virtual box doesn't allow direct programming of the microcontroller. So I have to bring it into my actual, uh, uh, what do you say, Windows machine. So I am basically going to bring my MCU Express on my Windows machine. So this is a little, you can say a little, um, you know, hindrance or, uh, you know, pain to do this. But I need to figure out a way where I can, you know, directly uh, compile all of this very quickly. So what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put my top view on and we're going to program and we're going to see how this whole thing works. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to my file system. And I'm going to go to my Linux files. Uh, it's an AXF file and I'm going to put very, very. And let's click run. So now this is going to download it onto my system. And now you can see that all these tasks are now working. This is blinking and this is blinking. Now, of course, the light is, you know, so now if I, I'm trying to like basically block the light I'm using my shadow, but the goal over here is you can see the two LEDs blinking and the third LED blinking. And because they both have different time rates, this is blinking at a different time rate and this is blinking at a different uh, speed. So we can also bring in my logic analyzer to have a look at how things are working and what's the so i can say you know play this on and you can see that this is connected to the two leds and yeah this gives you a good indication that is a 50 percent duty cycle and it's six hertz and this is also six hertz as it says over here that's generally how i like to work you know i have i could use an oscilloscope but when and i'm dealing with logic stuff it's good to use a logic analyzer um use an led these are all debugging mechanisms for me so that eventually as I advance more to the control systems and advanced, uh, you know, um, flight controller and stuff, I'm still going to be using all of these tools in just different ways and different proportions. When I'm debugging, I like to have my logic analyzer. I like to have my, you know, LED as well. I like to have um, all my tools working together. This is important, especially when you're debugging more advanced stuff. Uh, without having all these tools ready for you, it can be very tricky. So LED is very visual because we're all very visual learners. So that's a great thing. You know, having a logic analyzer, you can use an oscilloscope depending on the complexity of what you're trying to figure out, especially if it's, if it's not a square wave, you're dealing with sinusoidal waves, like, you know, motor controller, an oscilloscope would be the instrument that we want to use to debug these things. But over here, what I'm trying to show you is that though I'm focusing on the free RTO set of things, there's a lot of other tools that are necessary for me to debug what's going on. Um, so yeah. That is what I wanted to show. Um, and in the next videos and stuff, uh, I'll be focusing more on the control systems and the sense of fusion and doing all the necessary stuff to build a drone uh, right from the grounds up. If you like this video, if you find this video very useful and informative, please like the video. Do subscribe. Uh, that would be you know very helpful to me. Uh, and most importantly, you know, uh, comment um, and share your thoughts and processes. Uh, or if you have any ideas or if you have any suggestions, that would be great. Until next time, take care.